Hey, I'm Allie, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a deep dive into the Essential Graphics panel. It offers a ton of possibilities when you're working with text, a lot that you might not know about. One feature in particular I am super glad that they've made way quicker and way easier to use in the Essential Graphics panel. It's my favorite. I'm going to mention it and show you how to do it at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's hop into Premiere Pro and get started. Okay, so we're in Premiere Pro and I'm working on a yoga project for a client. So I figured I would use this as an example to show you some of the awesome things that we can do with the Essential Graphics panel. If you don't see the Essential Graphic window up in Premiere, you can click the Window tab at the top of your screen and click on Essential Graphics so that it's checkmarked. And that will bring up your Essential Graphics window. I'm currently in the Browse tab with my Template tab selected, and there are a lot of different templates available for free use. Let's type into the search bar Lower Third and this will bring up all of the lower third templates available in Premiere Pro. Let's select the template that says Film Lower Third Right Two Lines and drag it onto the video track two on our timeline. You can also move the orientation and alignment of the first text layer compared to the second text layer like so. I'll delete that template off of the timeline and we'll look at another template option. Let's select the classic title template and drag it onto our timeline on the V2 track. With our cursor over top of those layers on our timeline and the graphic selected, you can see in the edit tab here, each of the shape and text layers within this graphic. If you click on one of these eyeballs, you can turn that layer off like so. We'll turn these layers back on for now. To edit the text, we can select our text tool, select the text in our program window and change it to say whatever we'd like. With that text selected, we can change the font type in our essential graphics window by clicking on the text drop-down menu and choosing whichever text you prefer. We can increase or decrease the size of the text by using this slider or selecting the text size that currently for me shows as 61 and I'll change it to 100. I'll select the smaller text layer, change the font style and size, and with it still selected, under appearance, we can click on the fill box and change the color of the text. So I'll choose a dark blue for the text, select the hex code and press Command C on my keyboard or Control C to copy it so I can make the top text layer the same color, okay. Now I'll select the top text layer, click on the fill box again, and where the hex number is, I'll select the current code and press Command V on my keyboard or Control V to paste that blue hex number. Okay. Now we'll drag over all the circles on the program window to select all of the shapes. And in doing so, I've also selected the text. I wanna deselect the text, so we can do this by holding down shift on our keyboards and clicking on those two text layers to deselect them. Next, I'll click on the fill box again and choose a purple color. Okay. I'll turn off some of those circles now to make this look less cluttered. Next, you can select all of those circles and text and drag it wherever you'd like on screen. With everything still selected under the transform area, we can decrease the size of this entire template. I like around 60 and I'll move it up to the top left because I like the look of that better. Awesome. Coming up, I'll show you how to easily access your favorite templates. But first, let's look at how to create a custom template. Let's bring our cursor up to the Essential Graphics panel and click on the Edit tab. Next, let's click on the New Layer icon and click on Rectangle. And in doing so, a rectangle has popped up on our program window and a new graphic layer has automatically shown up on Video Track 2 on our timeline. With our selection tool, let's drag the length of the rectangle out Next, let's decrease the height of the rectangle. We can click on the rectangle and drag its position to the lower right side of the program window like so. Let's bring our cursor over our timeline and drag the duration of our rectangle graphic out longer like so. Next, let's go to our toolbar and select our text tool. We'll click above our rectangle on our program window and type the words yoga instructor. You can see in your essential graphic window under the edit tab that you now have a text layer. Let's choose our selection tool and drag the text layer over top of our rectangle and drag the size of the rectangle in to fit nicely around our text, doing our best to keep the spacing of the rectangle around the text consistent. 
Let's go back up to our edit tab, right click on the shape layer and select duplicate to create a second copy of this rectangle. And we can now drag that duplicate up above the first one. Let's go over to the appearance tab, click on fill and change this rectangle color to a nice teal. Okay, now let's drag this teal rectangle over the other rectangle. We can drag out the height and length of it as well slightly. Let's go up to our edit tab and drag that duplicate shape layer underneath the first one. Check out the program window. Now the teal rectangle is behind the other two graphics. We can adjust the position of that rectangle either by moving it with our selection tool or by moving around the position under our align and transform tab like so. For organization purposes, let's go up to our edit tab and rename this text shape by right clicking on it, click rename and naming it purple rectangle. We'll right click on the second shape, click rename and call it blue rectangle. Now we can easily identify which layer is which rectangle. Next, let's look at how to create a custom lower third template and how to use a very handy feature in the essential graphic panel called responsive design position. Let's say you wanted to add a word like the word beginner in front of yoga instructor. Making sure your graphics layer is selected on your timeline, go up to the edit tab and click on purple rectangle. Next, under the responsive design position tab, click on the pin to drop down menu and click on yoga instructor. By pinning your rectangle to the yoga instructor layer, when we add another word to this title, increasing the length of it, the purple rectangle will increase in length as well. We have to do one more thing to make sure this works and that is to click on the center of this position icon here to pin this layer to the center of the yoga instructor layer and this will make each side around this square blue. Great. Next, let's click on the blue rectangle layer and again, pin that to yoga instructor and select the center of the position icon here. With our selection tool, let's drag over these three assets and drag them more to the middle of the program window like so. Select our type tool, bring it to the beginning of this text and clicking just in front of the Y in yoga, start typing the word beginner. And notice, as you extend the length of this text title, the length of both rectangles also extends because they're both pinned to the yoga instructor text. Next, let's add some movement to our lower third title by adding some keyframes to have it come on screen and go back off screen. And we're going to use responsive design time to seamlessly adjust the duration of the time that your lower third title is on screen. You'll see what I mean, let's hop back in Premiere Pro. Now let's make sure our cursor is at the beginning of our text graphic. Making sure that the text layer is selected, let's hit the right arrow key on our keyboard 10 times so that we move the cursor over 10 frames. Go up to our effect controls window, click on the position toggle so that you activate a keyframe. Great, now hit the down arrow on your keyboard to bring your cursor to the beginning of the text layer on your timeline. We'll go back up to the position, drag the horizontal axis to the right so that it drags this lower third title off screen like so. Now let's press the space bar to play that through on our timeline and check out what it looks like. Great, that's looking really good. Now that you get the idea of how to key your graphic layer onto your screen, I'll speed up me doing the same thing to the end of the graphic layer so that this graphic animates off screen. Great. Let's say that you've keyframed your lower third title graphic based on the duration that that graphic's on screen, but you want to adjust the length that that graphic animates in and out for. Well, there's a really easy way to do so with the graphic layer selected. Let's go over to the essential graphics window and you do not want any of the layers selected, which will allow you to see responsive design time. Where it shows intro duration, let's go to the last set of zeros, which indicates frames. And remember how we keyed 10 frames into the graphic? Well, we'll make the intro duration slightly longer. So 13 frames works. And we'll make the outro duration 13 frames as well. You'll notice in effect controls where the keyframes show that the beginning and end areas are highlighted. These highlighted areas are the parts that we just created 13 frames of responsive design time for. And this will allow us to adjust the duration of our lower third title so that the intro and outro keyframes are not affected making this graphic responsive. 
If you create a lower third title or a text template and you love it and you want to use it in other videos, you can do so by saving your custom template. So let's learn how to do so right now. Select the graphic on the V2 track on your timeline, right click, click on export as motion graphics template. And where it says name, you can rename this graphic, whatever you'd like. I recommend that you give it a name that if you were to see, would automatically indicate to you and remind you of what this graphic looks like. So I'm gonna call this graphic double rectangle lower thirds. At the bottom of this window here, you can add in a few keywords that if you were to search would bring up this motion graphic template. So I'm gonna put in the keywords yoga, lower thirds title and rectangle. And we'll add commas into each of those words to separate them lovely. Under the destination tab, click on the drop down menu and select local drive. This gives you the option to browse and choose where you'd like to save this motion graphic template. Great, press okay and go back up to the essential graphics window. There you go, there's the double rectangle lower thirds title right there. If you really like a specific graphic in your essential graphics panel and you want it to be really easy to find, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so in the browse tab, if there's a specific template you really like, click the star to the bottom right to make it blue and doing this favorites it. I can go up to the top of the essential graphics window where the search bar is and just to the right of that search bar, there is a star. When you click on the star, it will bring up all of your favorited motion graphics, making it very easy to find them and use them right away. And now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite features of the Essential Graphics panel. Before this feature showed up, doing this technique would take a lot longer, and that is showing footage through your text. Using the Essential Graphics panel, it's very quick and easy, so let's look at how to do that. Select your text tool and on the program window type, in capital letters, the word fall. Choose your selection tool, increase the size of that text a lot so that it's really big. I'm gonna align mine like so, okay, awesome. Now let's go to the edit tab in our essential graphic panel and click on the new item icon and select from file. This allows you to choose footage that you'd like to have show in your text. I'll select a clip of leaves, open, and now that clip shows up under your edit tab and currently sits above the fall text. So let's select it and drag it underneath the fall text. Cool, okay. Now we'll select the fall text and underneath the text area of the essential graphics panel, the very bottom, click on mask with text and check that out. Now your video clip shows up within your text. And there you go. You now know how to use tons of different features within the Essential Graphics panel. So have fun. I use the Essential Graphics panel all the time when I'm editing YouTube videos as well as client projects. And I'm sure you will as well. Thanks for checking this tutorial out. If you're a Premiere Pro user or a videographer, cinematographer, and you want to keep up to date with the latest tutorials that we're posting all about filmmaking, subscribe to our channel. We release new videos weekly. We'll see you in another video. Have a great rest of your day.